process that the way a normal person will grieve. Mm -hmm. They will go through the normal stages. You remember me talking about uh, the denial bit. Eh? Mm -hmm. You go to the hospital and they tell you you have cancer, you have diabetes, you have uh, asthma, you have HIV. The first thing you say, no. Okay. No, can't that happen. can't happen. Yeah. With me, no. You deny and deny and deny. But you realize somehow uh, is the truth. So from that you go to anger. You're very angry. Mm -hmm. You're angry at everybody. You're angry at the doctors for saying that. Angry at yourself for not doing exercise enough. Yeah. The, the you would have managed the sugar levels and the fat and the everything. You are angry. angry you are the angry. Who did the you are angry at everyone, even those you review. And that is why when you become to look at the signs, mm -hmm. one of them is frustration. Uh, you can be frustrated, and most of them will refuse even to take medicine yeah. as a result of the frustration. Eh? Mm -hmm. So, after you are angry, you realize that this is not working. You do the bargaining. Oh, I think I can take this. What if, what if I don't take this sugar? I take the brown sugar. The doctor says no. Yeah. What if I take this and I don't take this? You bargain and you realize it's not working. The longest bit of that is what we call depression. When you now get to depression, because that is among how uh, individuals cope with it, eh? uh, when you come to depression, that is the stage that you're going to stay most. Because now you, you feel empty, you feel hopeless, nothing works for you, you feel you can't face tomorrow, you don't want to eat this, loss of appetite, so many things that come with depression. Mm -hmm. After you undo depression, you'll mm -hmm. go to acceptance. Mm -hmm. That is if you have a very nice support system. If okay. you don't, we shall bury you. You end oh, yeah, depression. yeah, yeah. That most people will end at depression, yeah, and uh, the dead, and that oh. is it. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay, so the support, support system now help matters with the a lot if you if you get the, uh, the, 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 the support that is needed, and sometimes that is all you lack anyway. Mm -hmm. Because you, 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 you come to a society, you know, the society is wired in a way that um, we are more of sympathetic than empathetic. You know the difference? Yeah, yeah. Sympathy and empathy. Sympathy is the way, oh yeah, okay. Oh yeah, oh you'll but be fine. <laughs> sympathy. And then there's also another guy there who is coming and telling you, ah, you're too young for this. Yeah. Blood pressure, hypertension, oh. at your age. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Dunia in Asia. <laughs> that one yeah. is sinking you more and more. Eh? Yeah, so people will come and say, oh my, you're diagnosed with that. Oh, even my uncle, and Kenyans don't know how to give advice. <laughs> you hear them say, even my uncle, he only took two months and he died. Yeah. You feel like, guy, so I'm also good. You feel doomed. Yeah. So uh, because you don't have good support system, that mm -hmm. is why you realize you go to grievery. But if you have good support system, your family, your immediate people okay. around you, and you also agree to be helped. Mm -hmm. There's one thing for us to agree to help you and you to be willing to take our help. Mm -hmm. For example, if you've been diagnosed with something that will require you to use a wheelchair, or maybe to, to uh, yeah, let's uh, just uh, use the example of a wheelchair. You find that you, you feel embarrassed. There's that feeling of like, oh, I'm now dependent on people or mm -hmm. what happened. Yeah. But you, rea you need it. But you don't want to accept that you need somebody to be there, to be helping you, you, you know, maybe wield you around and such stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the things. Those are the stages. Mm -hmm. So what are the signs mm -hmm. to, to look out for, mm -hmm. to know that you are psychologically affected by, mm -hmm. by that state? Uh, one of the things we say, uh, if you don't deal with your issues well, eh, you might get what we call psychiatric disorders. Mm -hmm. And depression is one of them. Depression is one of them. This prolonged stress. Uh, we are talking about the, the impact on individual, mm -hmm. at an individual level. One of the things is that you feel very hopeless. Very, very hopeless. Frustrated and out of control. You feel you can't control anything. Mm -hmm. I can't eat this. I can't eat this. I can't do this. I can't do this. Doctor say don't do this. Don't stay in this kind of weather. You feel out of control. Mm -hmm. Helpless. So one of the things that you'll notice with these people is that they are highly irritable. Mm. Anything, and, and that is why we need to tell people who are maybe dealing with uh, uh, sick patients at home, a sick uh, caregiver, uh, a sick family member, you need to understand mm. the, themselves they cannot be able to deal with the issue well. That is why they are projecting that anger. They are projecting out of people. Watoto, nini, and, and, and if there's one a group that requires counseling. It is those people who are living with a sick patient. Yeah, it's not easy. Exactly, we'll come to it. Yeah, today. it's we'll not easy back. at all, <laughs> by the way. So yeah. one of them is hopelessness. Mm -hmm. You will see these people have anger, a lot of anger issues. Uh, another thing you might look for when you're dealing with this person is mm -hmm. the, the signs of depression. Okay. And most people don't know even what to look for 
you hear people sit tulikuwa tunafikiria tu wakutu sawa Stephanie if i am a good friend of yours yeah, and i know. realize that you stop living your life uh, unani avoid avoid hivi nitakuchimba sana i want to find out why what is why, why do you want to keep to yourself mm -hmm. because depression crops in when you start finding that you no longer enjoying people's company na wacha na ile ya umepanda class maisha imepanda kuna class na wao we understand eh and you 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 start filtering the number of friends that you have you're not talking about you no longer want people's company when people are going out social gathering you don't want you want to keep to yourself you want to be alone most of the time we weren't created that way so we will want why are you not enjoying anything anything you, you feel so cold your life has become like you in a cocoon of your own mm -hmm. so that is one sign of depression people now feel to themselves not talking not doing what they no longer enjoy anything outside work that's a depressive person eh? okay. another thing is that these people they have anxiety syndrome throughout i don't know whether you remember us talking about grief the other show and we were saying that there's a grief we call anticipated grief anticipated, anticipated grief. grief is the kind of grief whereby the thing has not happened but maybe you have a sick patient in hospital and every day you go to the hospital na muna muna ako icu ah so you you are you start griefing early early enough so you start feeling that feeling of loss even before the real loss happens so these people the family members the immediate one they have anticipated grief they are seeing you your condition is deteriorating on monday it was feeding today is not even feeding tomorrow is doing you know that kind of a feeling so there's that anger the emptiness with this person you can even look at in terms of the the weight this person continues losing weight because you're not feeding well what about the sleep pattern you notice the person changes the sleep pattern uh, what we call insomnia mm -hmm. now usionge ingine nilisikia mtaani people saying you know me i am suffering from insomnia i'm like okay so what are you doing uh, me i'm the, the, the kind of person who uh, i'm testing at uh, i'm a keyboard person 2 am that's not insomnia <laughs> you have induced yourself into it insomnia self induced insomnia is literally you want to sleep and you cannot you can't you can't mm. you go to bed you look for sleep from north and south and you cannot find because your brain is too alert. Mm -hmm. your body is totally exhausted but your brain is too alert well, uh, to sleep eh? so you find that these people will suffer insomnia and why they already have unprocessed thoughts mm -hmm. anxiety mm -hmm. disorders what would happen mind. what if i sleep and I, and, I, and I die in my sleep what if this happens what if i get an attack maybe it's suddenly uh, you are talking about um mm -hmm the asd the uh, autistic uh, spectrum okay. disorder uh -huh. uh, it is that man the way we are creating awareness about that eh? so you you have this child one of them is that they are not able to process the communication skills well yeah. and uh, their anger issues they are very highly scheduled and orderly the way they want things done mm -hmm. sometimes you could find one that is conversing so you start wondering as a caregiver what if they converse what will i do you feel helpless mm -hmm. so some of the signs that you look at are those ones so that you know that e Okay. Especially if you find yourself with suicidal thoughts, self-harming thoughts, then thinking the now I cannot manage, I cannot manage. When you talk of coping mechanism, we'll tell you what to do and actually also what not to do because mm -hmm. there are things you're not supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like if you indulge in alcohol so that you can forget. Mm -hmm. Not good, especially <laughs> if you have a chronic <laughs> illness. Yes. That's definitely mm -hmm. not uh, to go mm -hmm. to. What about now the, the caregivers? So <laughs> many times... Um, uh, the caregivers go through a lot. Mm -hmm. They try to be strong for the themselves mm -hmm. and for the patient. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, what is the psychological impact of, of the their loved one having a chronic illness? Oh yes, and uh, we have not even uh, talked about. I've talked about the individual, and I know even we'll come to even at a family level mm -hmm. because they also another group that need to be helped. Eh? As yeah. a caregiver, you're there and you're living with someone who is unwell. Be it a relative, be it not. Maybe you're working there. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's uh, a close relative. One of the things you realize is that you'll be emotionally exhausted. Yeah. That is number mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether Stephanie you've ever lived with someone who is unwell, sick. Wachana na homa, wachana na Yes. Something that every day you are even afraid of doing your normal life. Mm -hmm. you, you you can't even go outside for a social gathering because you're not sure at a, at a what if something person. happens. You yeah. get that? Eh? Mm -hmm. So as a caregiver, one of the things you realize is that you'll be emotionally exhausted. You will be frustrated. Mm. Or they refuse. <laughs> Out of the frustration they have, they say, okay, le let me just die. I just want to die. 
we want I'm to tell you it is tired. normal not to be okay mm -hmm. it is very normal not to be okay but again don't drive yourself to the grave mm -hmm. life is not that life is how you react to that so you realize that this person says oh i'm not taking medicine and you're there the caregiver you feel so bad you prepare this food they say i don't want this mm -hmm. or maybe sometimes they even vomit and so you feel very frustrated it is you who needs help so that you, if you can't be strong enough, you can't be able to handle this other person. Mm -hmm. You need to be well to be able to help another person. Yeah, okay. If you're not well, there's no way you'll be able to stand for another person. Mm -hmm. So this person, we always tell them, number one, take time to unwind. Mm -hmm. If there's a possibility of you just taking rest, a break, oh. away from the stressor. Mm -hmm. So if you're a caregiver and uh, maybe you get uh, you, you're off this, please go and unwind. If possible, engage a counselor. It is not wrong. You know, people in the society have been to uh, make career counseling. Nyawala watu wame cheesy, quote and quote. Yeah? You think hey, that one is a mother okay, So this one, no mm -hmm. counseling is when you feel you 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 have so much in you. You need someone to see. We call it psychotherapy. Mm -hmm. You need someone to sit and listen to you and you talk. They talk therapy. Yeah. So go and talk to that person. What are your frustrations? They'll help you process those thoughts, the negative uh, pattern, and all those things. Eh? So take time to unwind. If possible, go and do meditation, the yoga, the exercise, hit the gym. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of things that can be able to take away the stress hormone in you. There's a, a hormone we call cortisol, eh? uh -huh. a very bad hormone <laughs> in a way. Okay. It is the stress hormone in you and it can make you add weight. <laughs> for no yeah, so you have stress, but you're adding so much weight. Oh, no, so <laughs> it is the stress hormone. Eh? Cortisol, okay. when, when you're stressed in your body, you, the other time we were talking about the response to stress. Eh? Mm. One day I'll teach you about the science of stress and why you hear people say, mm. I feel ah. like I want to visit the stomach and the, 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 the <laughs> washroom every other yeah. time. Eh? Uh, there's ah. a science behind that and what makes you feel like you want you have butterflies in the stomach, you okay. have stage fright and all those eh? mm. so this person uh, it is important that you go and work out while you're working out you release the endorphin the good hormone so uh, to undo the cortisol uh -huh. so you'll be able to you release the stress hormone uh, enough to uh, oh yes 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 so by the time you're coming back you've already released a lot of emotions mm -hmm. so you come back strong to face this person otherwise to kick watch a video you will be the next patient there <laughs> <laughs> you need to take care of yourself well. A lot and talk a lot mm -hmm. and also it is good that we teach people to learn that um, you are not the cause of this. Mm -hmm. Don't be guilty. Don't blame yourself so much and the reason why this person is like this, you are not. Mm -hmm. These were just meant to be like that. This Sometimes happened. fate is just like that. So you can only um, help that person if you get out of the equation yourself. Mm. So you need to be well to help the oh yeah, sure, sure. person who's sick. Mm -hmm. What about mm -hmm. for the family? Mm -hmm. It's usually um, a hard time for them, especially oh yes. when, you're w when you look at the financial stress mm -hmm. that they undergo. It's the emotional stress that oh they yes. undergo. It's the fear. It's everything, mm -hmm. you know, for a family member. Mm -hmm. if, let's say if it's a wife, it's, if it's the kids, mm -hmm. you know, and the father is the one who's taking the house mm -hmm. or the wife, you know. Mm -hmm. So wha what is the impact on Impa them? And the impact on the family. Thank you. And mm -hmm. it is very important for people to know. I've had people come to counseling and say, I didn't know this was affecting me until when I went to the hospital and the doctor said, blah, 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 blah. Mm. So you don't have a way of knowing the damage, the, the psychological impact it has happened to you because of having a sick relative, uh, a, a, a close um, a family member who is dealing with that. Number one, these people will also undergo the same, same uh, uh, emotions I talked about for an individual. Uh, yeah, they will I feel know. helpless. Mm -hmm. This is the father, this is the mother, this is a child, and they can do nothing about it. Is mm -hmm. here being wasted by the disease, but there's nothing we can do about it. So you feel helpless. Number two, you feel guilty. You, you, you know, they always take the guilt upon themselves. Maybe we did cook good food. That is why this person's sugar level is not okay. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were oversalting our food. Maybe, you know, you start thinking a lot of things. Maybe yeah. we didn't allow them to go and play an exercise. That is why they have a heart disease. All those things. And when you realize that you have this, they also have anxiety issues. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. Because every day you live and you don't know what will happen next. What if they die? So what if this fear they have fear they live Constant in fear, fear. Mm -hmm. and 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 i i realize that uh, one of the main problems if you go to the society and you unpackage people you know in counseling we say you are fine until we unpackage you <laughs> if we unpackage you you will realize that there's so much 
that you piled you're while you're growing up. Eh? Mm. And nobody helps you to process your thought patterns. Nobody helps you to process your emotions. So you uh, continue to pile up. But when a major thing happens, you blow up. Mm -hmm. So because there's so much that was lying inside of you. Yeah. So these people, they are accumulating stress every day, every day, every day. But they haven't really vented their stress or done something like that. Eh? Mm -hmm. So they are affected. Anxiety comes in. And finally, you even find that they have despair. They have given up. They don't know what to do about these people. That is in terms of their emotions. Um, other than that, you come to maybe the financial, as you have talked about, eh? mm -hmm. you realize that uh, chronic illness can be uh, uh, expensive. Draining, it can yeah. be expensive and uh, draining financially. Yeah? Think in terms of medication. This person has to buy this. Maybe it's cancer. They have to go for chemotherapy. Mm. Uh, talks in, ter in terms of even the, 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 the transportation. Maybe this person requires to go to the clinic. Yeah. The family feel financially drained. Even change of diet. Mm. What you people are eating, the sick person will not be eating that. The doctor said, avoid this, take this. And maybe whatever they are told to take is quite expensive. So they have to readjust. And not only that, you talk, you've talked about the ASD. Uh, mm. the, uh, the autism. autism. Eh? So think about uh, 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 this child who is autistic. Eh? You need a special caregiver who is trained. Yeah. Not any other person will wake up and deal with that. Others will hire uh, thousands of them. Because mm. they, they don't know how. See, she die out. They don't know how to deal with this child. Exactly. This child can be uh, this anything can be able to trigger the child. You know they have triggers. Eh? Mm. Especially the colors. Uh, they will not come and do a very bright color. It will be a trigger. They want routine. Come on, apanga vitu zake. Don't. Ipanga watu hivo. Hivo viru ziko. They want routine. They don't want change. Eh? So if there is no caregiver who has been trained to deal with that child, mm -hmm. wataku unawajiri every day and they disappear. And it's very frustrating. Yeah. Uh, think about special school. Maybe they, they, they will not go to a normal school. You'll mm. need to invest in a special, special school. school. And maybe uh, you've heard of these people we call the shadow teachers. Eh? Mm -hmm. A shadow teacher is, uh, while the normal teacher, classroom teacher, okay, let me not use the word normal because every teacher is normal. No, so yeah. while the, the teacher is teaching here, and this child cannot match the pace of these other learners, eh? mm. the shadow teacher teaches this child. And I'm explaining here, now in simpler terms because the speed is not the same. Mm -hmm. You get it? Eh? Yeah. So you'll need to hire a shadow teacher. You see, it can be very draining Expensive. financially yeah? Yeah. in terms of whatever it is that you do. Think about even this social, social gathering. You, you, you have met these people uh, who have, uh, uh, they, they, they have cut off people from their family because they have a sick person. Mm -hmm. They cannot go out for social gathering. People cannot come and tell you, let's go for a gas night out because you have a sick either parent or someone uh, in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, ev everything about you have to adjust. Everything yeah. about you changes. It can be very stressful. Even vacation. Maybe you used to take vacation once in a year. No, you can't. You can't. And if you have to, remember this is a sick person, so you have to think about a special room uh, that is accommodation, special diet, special ways of transportation, and even financially you're drained, so you may not even go for that vacation. So for the family, it can be very draining, even in terms of their marriage. There are marriages that break because mm -hmm. they didn't know how the husband or the wife didn't know how oh, to deal with a sick yeah. person. And mm -hmm. so they find that... Mm -mm, and the, you know, Stephanie, when people go to the wedding and say, I do, I wonder whether they know what they <laughs> say, I do. Comes with the yeah? I do. <laughs> in what, in what, in what, in sorrow. I think you, you, you need to filter what you say I do to because <laughs> it, it means you do everything. When this person is sick, yeah, when this person is healthy, health. you're there. So mm. you are not about to quit because of the, of the, of the sickness. Okay. Mm. Wonderful. This this is you know this is uh, I think it's very important mm -hmm. because a lot of people go through this and they're not able to talk mm -hmm. because they they don't want you know you don't know especially for family and and whatnot you feel responsible for mm. um, whatever is happening and you don't even want to have a happy you feel guilty to even oh have yeah. um, a happy life you oh know yeah, sure. like. You, you want to share in the in the struggle mm. with the person that. Mm -hmm. uh, so how can people cope with this uh, for both the individual, mm -hmm. family, and caregivers? Oh yeah. You've talked about the caregiver, what they can do. Mm -hmm. What about now family and the individual? As, at a family level, I said number one, one of the things we need to do is educate yourself mm -hmm. about this illness that we are dealing with. This person has been diagnosed with cancer get all the necessary information from the hospital, from 
everywhere that you can be able to learn on good information. Mm -hmm. Learn what this person requires. Learn what this person does not require. Learn what can trigger what. Learn when they say no, what you do. Are we mm -hmm. getting? Mm -hmm. So that you avoid frustration. Okay. So if it's someone who has, uh, for example, uh, 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 diabetes, learn what it is they take and what it is they don't take. Mm -hmm. So when you have all the information with you, you feel fully equipped to be able to help these people. That is number one. Mm -hmm. Number two, understand that you're not the cause reason. Because most people will take the blame on themselves. The family, it is me who caused this. It is me who made this child to be like this. It is not you. Mm -hmm. So learn to take away that feeling of blame. If you feel you are that exhausted, uh, always engage even the, you know, I, I've, I've been talking to uh, someone who was um, diagnosed with that, mm -hmm. uh, the chronic illness, and I was telling them, it is good to talk to people. Mm -hmm. Stephanie, if you go to the hospital, God forbid, and the doctor diagnoses you with one of those, and you feel overwhelmed, talk to people, so that when you visit Zipporah, she will know, by the way, Stephanie had mentioned she's hypertensive. So this food, I'll, I'll, I'll limit the amount of salt. Uh, you get that, eh? Yeah. So it is you who will teach us how to treat you. Uh -huh. You get it, eh? Yeah. But the moment you have not mentioned, because one of the things is we tend to keep to ourselves. We feel this information is personal. I don't want to share it with the people. And that is one sure way to depression. Mm -hmm. The moment you feel nobody in this world has ever passed through this, it is only me. Yeah. You out of around 10 billion people on earth. <laughs> That is your sure way to go to your grave. Uh -huh. So when you start talking to people, you tell mm. them, you know, my sister, you know, my brother was diagnosed with this. And you will be surprised. People are a wealth of knowledge. Mm. They'll tell you a lot. They, you, they will even share common experiences. You realize, ah, kumbe si peke angu. You get it, eh? Yeah. 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 So, and and, and, and I, I, I like, um, you always hear, like, uh, this is Autistic Month Awareness. And there is a group of people mm -hmm. who have common. Maybe you have a, a child. Maybe you have somebody in, in, in a family that uh, suffers from that. So you come together and you are able to deal, share your experiences. This is what happened. Then this is what the doctor told us. This is what we did. We were able to uh, come out of it. And you realize, ah. This thing is manageable. Mm -hmm. The only problem with stress is when you think you're the only person suffering from that. Eh? Exactly. So form support system. Talk to people. Allow people to help you. Mm -hmm. Because that is also another thing. People could be willing to help, but you're not. You want to, you know, you, there's always that, you know, in the denial, you want to prove to people that you're okay. <laughs> you want to prove to people that you can do the things that you're doing prior to the diagnosis. Of course you cannot. Mm -hmm. If the doctor said, avoid this, avoid weightlifting, uh, you, the health of your heart is like this, you want to go to the gym and prove a panami, I can still do it. Okay. Don't. There's nothing to be proven to people. Yeah. So avoid that. Eh? And when the worst come to the worst, see a counselor. See a counselor. Talk to people. You know, uh, 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 um, part of uh, the, the, the counseling that we give, there's something we call the CBT. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a coping mechanism, eh? Uh, CBT is Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Uh -huh. This is a, is a therapy whereby we help you, the counselor, the therapist, will help you to process the negative thoughts, patterns that you've been having. When you process them, you replace them with the positive thoughts. Mm -hmm. So uh, this therapy is everything about to undo the beliefs and the myths that you've been having and replacing them with the positive thoughts. That is one of the uh, coping mechanisms that we help when they come for counseling. And you notice, most people, what has been eating them is actually the negative thought pattern. Mm -hmm. If we can undo that, I don't know who planted <laughs> them there. If we can undo that, then and then now you start believing positively. I, I, I know you have had, um, when we, we are celebrating the World AIDS, uh, HIV and AIDS Day, yes. Yes. you yeah. have heard people say, uh, uh, I was diagnosed maybe in 1990 what? I've, I, I've, I'm 50 years into this, I'm 30 years into this, and you wonder, my goodness, the people I knew who are HIV, they died a month after, two months, one year after, yeah. but this one has has lived with it. Why? That's it is because this person, number one, accepted. Number two, was able to undo all the myths they have had and now replace it with the positive, positive thought words. patterns. Eh? And they were now able to take uh, advice they were given. The doctor says avoid this, they avoid. Take this, they take. Exercise, they exercise. All those things they've been told to do. And they are doing it very well. The body responds positively. Okay. So that is one of the, the, the mechanisms we help. We also assist them in what we call psychotherapy. 
-hmm. Psychotherapy is talk therapy. Talk and Just talk, talk and, and talk. talk. <laughs> 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 um, and if that is what characteristic, uh, uh, characterizes counseling, it's a talk therapy. Mm -hmm. It is a place where you come and we are not judging you and we allow you to talk and talk and talk. Maybe I might interrupt and ask you a question and then allow you to talk and talk mm -hmm. and talk. And finally you realize out of your many talks, the answer lied there. <laughs> you had the answer. <laughs> you carried them. the answer you all along. <laughs> but you <laughs> didn't know that uh -huh. it was there. Because uh, when you are diagnosing stress, uh, you always ask people, uh, in the past 24 hours, what have you thought about? <laughs> and they tell you, in the past 12 hours, what about in the past one hour? In a frequency of 1 to 10, how many times has it repeated? And you realize they will be telling you about one thing. Mm -hmm. In a span of two hours talk, that person has talked about marriage. My husband, my husband, my husband, <laughs> and you know, this is this the is deal. The problem. This is the problem. <laughs> if you can deal with this, you're good. You're good to go. So the talk therapy. Okay. There's also another therapy we call the interpersonal therapy. Mm -hmm. Interpersonal therapy uh, is whereby we come and we help you, you know, deal with and do the past and deal with the present. Mm -hmm. There are so many people who will not heal and are not healing because they're still clinging to their past. Mimi kama tu ningekuwa tunafanya exercise veje tu if I only avoided this, it's not helping now. Mm -hmm. So we can only help you and do that and start with what is helping now. We call it interpersonal therapy. So oh. all those are coping mechanisms that uh, we can help somebody who is dealing with chronic illness, both at an individual level and also at a personal level. At an individual level, we'll tell you to adjust, Stephanie. Mm -hmm. You know, the three is you accept, you adjust, and you advance. It's not easy. Accept, adjust, advance. Yeah, accept, ad adjust, and advance. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. The first thing I tell you is very difficult to accept what, what the doctor says. Yeah. The doctor's report is very, very difficult to accept it. Mm -hmm. Number two, when you try to accept it now, it is very difficult also to adjust. But the moment you adjust, you'll be able to advance. Mm -hmm. Adjusting means the doctor has said this, this is the condition, fine. What can I do as an individual so that I am able to match what the doctor has said? Probably I need to change my diet. Kama mimi nilikuwa mtu ninapenda the sugary stuff, I loved a lot of salt in my fries, I loved a lot of what whatever the doctor says, avoid, avoid. Na labda, in adjustment, they'll tell you avoid the, you've heard people talk of Johanna Mutebe. <laughs> yeah, you, you avoid alcohol, yeah? yeah? So they'll tell you avoid that. Please accept because okay. it is for your own good. Maybe in adjusting in diet, in exercise, maybe start doing some exercise, some meditation, s sleep early. They'll tell you now, watch na imana near social media 2 a.m. Uh, what yeah, you I'm know <laughs> you know those <laughs> team insomnia people eh? mm -hmm. so they'll tell you in adjusting there are many things rest meditation among all those eh? even taking medication the right way there are people who die not because of anything because and they refuse to take medication see mm -hmm. mm -hmm. i've told you life is one percent the how news you get 99 percent how you respond to the news you get mm -hmm. so this person has, has refused medication how else can we help so when you are adjusting, you will know the doctor said take three times one, two times this, avoid this, take this with this. And if you follow that, you will advance. Yeah, mm. you get even a quick, better recovery. Oh, yeah, sure. As we come to a close in this particular conversation, mm -hmm. how, um, how can people, mm -hmm. in terms of relationships, mm -hmm. um, avoid the breaking of relationship or mm -hmm. splitting of family, mm -hmm. especially um, for cases with special needs mm -hmm. like autism mm. you know I've, I've interacted with a lot of aut uh, autistic uh, kids mm. and their parents mm. and uh, most people say my husband and I almost separated oh at yeah. this particular time mm. and you have some who are raising children mm. you know a single parents mm. so how, how exactly can they cope mm -hmm. for a family that has just gotten news that a loved one is you know has special needs mm. or, or something mm -hmm. around that thank you I'll, I'll still go back to the why the why we do this is very important. Mm. The why, Stephanie, you wake up early in the morning and you work to work, you come to work. Yeah. <laughs> is what motivates you to be here. So why are we in a relationship? Why are we married? Why are we a family? Why are we a couple? And uh, did we have a contract where we agreed we shall be together <laughs> only <laughs> in good times? <laughs> yeah? Exactly. I, I, I think I saw someone you know, with TikTok, you never know. Someone who was doing those wedding vows and uh, uh, the priest had to ask, Akaribia tena, 
akaambua rudi akakataa kabisa hiyo bit ya for better for worse for worse no alisema for better for better hiyo was hiyo akakataa and you know the keep on in so uh, we we need to find out and i i, I want to tell you this eh? mm. why most people uh, will break or are breaking in their marriages in their relationships it is because they don't know this is a strange area to them mm. this is something they have never had they don't have information mm. about Otherwise, even if it was you, Stephanie, and uh, you are subjected to live with maybe, um, let's say, a child, for example, with autism, mm. it uh, can be very draining because you are helpless. You have no knowledge of this, what this child wants. You don't know what this child triggers him to be that. You don't know what to do, what to help. You feel helpless. And you feel the off only way to chicken out, you opt out of that marriage. Mm -hmm. You feel it, eh? Yeah. It's like it's a burden. But the moment you seek information, and that is why I said at a family level, let them educate themselves. Even if it means attending all the seminars, going to the doctor or the clinician and ask them all the question. If this happens, what do I do? Because they, are, uh, uh, they have uh, uh, all the information that you require. If this happens, what is it? So go and find out who is an autistic child. What are the characteristics of an autistic child? I'm giving an example. Mm -hmm. What are the triggers? What do these children want? You, you realize they don't work very well with bright colors. You go change your house. Mm -hmm. You realize they don't take this. You they don't take this. They have maybe delayed speech. You just know. Uh, you will cultivate patience with yourself. So the moment you educate yourself about any illness, any disease, you can be able to overcome it. You can live with it forever and ever, and you are at peace with it. Mm -hmm. mm? Right. Uh, the moment you know uh, whatever you're mm -hmm. dealing with. That giant you're dealing with, and that is why it explains. You've ever seen people in a marriage setup? You know, most of marriage counselors say, in yeah. a marriage setup, you've had people ask, "How do they live with such kind of a man?" <laughs> I mean, he's so ruthless. He's so like this. The moment you, the wife, mm -hmm. has learned this man and how he is, what triggers him and what puts him off and uh, what he likes, he does, you will live with him peacefully. <laughs> people <laughs> wonder, what, what did you, you do to him? him? How do you handle him? <laughs> so anything you can be able to tame. So the moment you teach yourself mm -hmm. what is this illness, what is cancer, what does it look like, what do these people take, how do they react, how do they behave, what happens after chemotherapy, how can I be of help, you'll be very essential in that family. Wow. But the moment you feel helpless, you, there's nothing you can do, you feel it is out of control, you have no information, you opt out. Mm -hmm. So teach yourself everything about that. About it. Information mm. is power after all. Yeah, 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 yeah it is. And it's important to stay united because mm. you're the Very important system of, uh, of that person. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in that uh, particular condition. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Zephora. I don't know if you want to add anything before we close Before we close it, as you also give us your social media handle. Oh, yeah, thank you. So um, mm -hmm. uh, I'll just say this. This, when somebody has been diagnosed with a chronic illness, it is not the end of life. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a whole life ahead of you to live. And we are not God to decide when somebody is going to live the other. Mm -hmm. So do not kill yourself because of the information you have been given. B because I have repeated time and again, life is 1% what you hear, 99% how you respond to what you hear. So allow yourself. And finally, to the society, be empathetic. Don't be sympathetic. Usikuje na hizo advice. You know, Stephanie, outside here, people have advice. A lot of them, I call them uncalled for advice. <laughs> oh, ikifika um, hapo, you, you, you try losing weight. Try losing around 10 kgs, you'll yeah. see. Uh, take lime, take ginger, take what? <laughs> <laughs> Those people have oh, advice. Oh, I, I said this, they can tell you to eat things that are not even edible. <laughs> I yeah? know. So avoid all those advice. Yeah. Uh, if you want to help somebody, don't be so much of a sympathetic person. Be an empathetic person. Assist mm -hmm. this person genuinely without, um, uh, and God will reward you anyway. So uh, that is it for now. My, my, my uh, social media handle on Facebook, mm -hmm. you find me at Zippy Wanyeki uh, on YouTube. I am Zipora Wanyeki. Uh, of course, uh, we have, uh, uh, I have a counseling organization. We call it the Inner Balance Counseling. Mm -hmm. And um, you come, we are going to help you. And especially you, Stephanie, uh -huh. <laughs> we shall give you a discount. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but then I was told to, to, to say hi to, to some, uh, uh -huh. some, some followers. <laughs> and they're saying, say hi to Stephanie and tell her that. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs>
want that show visit. There's a show we did, I think, the other end. It was about... Um, Which one? It was about personality development. Ah. Personality. So the, ah. most people are telling me, we would really want to know whether our personality has changed. <laughs> so say hi to Stephanie. So you plus okay. your team, we can okay. give you a discount okay. uh, at the Inner Balance Counseling Services. Wow. And um, this is where we are. Okay, yes. amazing. Mm. We have a good discount. So I, I'm bringing my team with me. Oh, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Bring them. Last know? time I got enough of them. <laughs> 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 the other show we did a uh -huh. brief. Wonderful, yes. wonderful. Mm. Mm. So uh, the Inner Balance counseling. Yeah, Inner Balance Counseling uh -huh. is uh, uh, our organization. organization. And uh, that is where we, we you come. It offers counseling and psychotherapy services. I don't know whether you know uh -huh. the difference. Eh? I don't think uh, I do. Counseling <laughs> is when you're dealing with something so Okay. And then you come, not only in, in marriage, it can be anything, eh? mm -hmm. it's a short term. Eh? So maybe you could have a session or two and you're good to go. With therapy, you must something have been having something term. in a, that needs several sessions, a continuous one, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. So we offer both counseling and psychotherapy services. services. Mm -hmm. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we'll definitely come. Thank sure. you for the invitation. Uh, and thank you sana. for coming. Karibu uh, sana. <laughs> and sharing amazing insights. So that has been Zipporah Wanyeki. She's a counselor and you can get her on social media at Zipi Wanyeki. Also at the Inner Balance Counseling. That's her organization. We've been talking about psychological impact of chronic illness. I hope you've taken something for, from it. You've been encouraged or you are, in, you are in the know at least. So we're going to take a short break and then we'll be back with music. Yes, because um, today is Thursday, we have uh, music, we have uh, some guests who's who are going to talk to us about poetry. So you are definitely in the right place. The hashtag is Thursday Vibes at Y254 channel. Keep it locked. <laughs>